welcome to the Blindfold Chess Podcast. This week, we are looking at the Indian prodigy Domaraju Gukesh, commonly known as Gukesh D. Born in 2006, Gukesh learned how to play chess at the age of seven. Two years after he started to play chess, he won the under nine Asian School Championships in 2015 with a 1770 rating. He did not stop there. With his rating rapidly climbing, his father gave up his career as an ear, nose, and throat surgeon to support his son while his mom continued to be a microbiologist. In March of 2018, Gukesh fulfilled the requirements for his international master title at the age of 11. Later in the year, he participated in the World Youth Championships for the Under-12 division. At the event, he won five gold medals, one each for the Team Rapid event, Team Blitz, Individual Classic, Individual Rapid, and Individual Blitz categories. He had a chance to become the youngest Grandmaster in history in December of 2018, but he drew a must-win game, falling short of his final Grandmaster norm by one half of a point at the Sunway Sitches Chess Festival. In an interview with ESPN, Gukesh said, quote, I was disappointed for two days, then I moved on, end quote. The following year, in 2019, he became, at the time, the second youngest player to ever earn his Grandmaster title at the age of 12 years, 7 months, and 17 days. He missed Sergei Karyakin's record by 17 days. From getting his first international master norm to his final grandmaster norm, Gukesh played in over 30 tournaments over 16 months, covering 276 games in 13 countries. And over the span of five and a half years, he went from a rating of 1300 to 2500. In 2021, he earned gold on board one at the Chess Olympiad with a 2867 performance rating. The next year, at the age of 16, he became the youngest player to ever defeat Magnus since Magnus had become the world champion. Gukesh had also reached the quote-unquote super grandmaster level of 2700, making him the fourth youngest to do so. Last year was a very busy year for Gukesh. He passed Vishwanathan Anand as the top-ranked Indian player the first time in 37 years that Anand did not hold the top-ranked Indian player spot. He finished second in the FIDE World Cup, earning a spot in the 2024 Candidates Tournament, and he was the youngest player to cross the 2750 rating barrier. The most amazing part to me is Gukesh is still in school. He attends Velamal Vidaya Mel Ayanabakam in Chennai, India. He attends the same school as Pragnananda, in September of 2023, they both received 20 lakh from their school for their chess accomplishments. 20 lakh is approximately 24,000 US dollars or 22,000 euros. So far in 2024, Gukesh has finished in a four way tie for first at the 2024 Tata Steel tournament. There doesn't seem to be a ceiling for Gukesh's accomplishments. Time will only tell what he will be able to do in the future. This week, we are going to the Tata Steel India tournament from last year. Domoraju Gukesh versus Maxime Vashir Lagraf. Now, if we're ready, let's begin. 1. Pawn to d4. Knight f6. 2. Pawn to c4. Pawn to e6. 3. Knight f3. Pawn to d5. Four, Knight c3. Knight b to d7. Four, 
5. Pawn C captures D5. Pawn E captures D5. 6. Bishop F4. Bishop B4. Seven pawn to e three. Knight e four. Eight queen c two. Pawn to g five. Nine bishop g three. Knight b6. Black had the option here of playing knight captures g3 in an attempt to double up white's pawns. Why did black not do that? Black would be doubling up white's pawns, but if white were to play h captures g3, white has an active rook against the now weakened black kingside. Instead, black is using that knight on e4 to exert a lot of pressure in white's position, particularly around the c3 and d2 squares. Ten, bishop d3. Bishop f5. 11, knight d2. Queen e7. Twelve, pawn to a three. Bishop captures c3. Thirteen, Pawn B captures C3. Pawn to H5. 14. Bishop captures E4. Why did white choose now to capture on E4? The move pawn to h5 puts some pressure on white's dark square bishop on g3. If white didn't do anything about it, black would play pawn to h4, which would trap the dark squared bishop for white, especially if white were to play bishop to e5, black would respond pawn to f6, and that bishop is lost. Playing bishop captures e4, allows white to have an option to play pawn to h4 without messing up his pawn structure after a move like knight captures g3. 3pawn d captures e4. 15. Pawn to h4. Castle queenside. Sixteen, pawn to c4. Bishop g6. Seventeen, pawn to a4. Rook captures d4. Eighteen, pawn to a five. After black played rook captures d4, white had the option of playing pawn e captures d4. Instead, white played pawn to a5, attacking the knight on b6. Why did white not capture the rook on d4?
If white were to play pawn e captures d4, black would respond with pawn e4 to e3, which attacks the knight on d2, attacks the pawn on f2, and opens up a discovered attack on the white queen from that bishop on g6. Rook h to d8. Nineteen, pawn a captures b6. Rook captures d2. Twenty, pawn b captures a7. Playing pawn b captures a7 allows white's queen to be captured on c2. However, white has a tactic to go up a rook in this exchange. Can you see it? Rook captures c2. Twenty-one, pawn a8 promotes to queen check. King d7. Twenty-two, queen a4 check. King e6. Twenty-three, queen captures c2. Queen b4 check. Twenty-four, king e2. Black resigns. Once the dust has settled, white is up a full rook, the king is protected on e2, the light-squared bishop on black's side is completely locked out, so black has no counterplay anywhere to be seen. Gukesh did a phenomenal job in the 2024 Candidates Tournament. We're going to be seeing a lot of him for a long time to come. So that is all that we have for this week. Tune in next time, where we will continue to work on our blindfold skills and look at another game of The Masters.